Hello, good evening. My name is Claire Ballard. I work at the University of Reading in the global recruitment team and I'm one of the regional managers and I have the pleasure of looking after Turkey. So I'm pleased to be joining you this evening just to give you a little bit of a, an overview of the university, a bit about the courses that we offer, how you can actually apply to Reading and our entry requirements and a little bit about the town as well. So thank you very much for making time to join us this evening. So for those of you who've not heard of Reading, we are actually very close to London. And I think for Turkish students, that's probably one of the things that they find most attractive about Reading. It's a beautiful campus university, everything you need in one location, but within 30 minutes maximum, you're right in central London. So you have the best of both worlds, really. We're in the south of England in what's known as the Thames Valley, Silicon Valley. Um, so a lot of particularly IT, technological companies, computers um, are based in Reading. And again, because of our proximity to London, we tend to be an attractive destination for employers. So I think that's also good if you are thinking about staying on and working at the end of your degree, which of course the UK government is uh, now going to make much easier for students once they finish their degree with the ability to stay for up to two years working, then I think Reading is a, a good destination for employment opportunities. Coming from overseas, we have really good transport links, so you can actually reach Heathrow Airport directly by coach in just 40 minutes from Reading. And Gatwick Airport is also very easy to reach. It's a direct train from Reading. It takes just over one hour. And generally, we're very well located for reaching pretty much anywhere in the UK because we're on that main rail hub out of London. You can be in Scotland directly from Reading, or in the other direction, the, the West Country. So a really good location. We're one of the older, more established universities in the UK, so known as a red brick university. We've been established for over 125 years. We started off delivering education programmes as part of one of the colleges at Oxford University, so very proud of that traditional link with Oxford, but we actually became a university in our own right in 1926. And our first international student joined us in 1906. So just a few pictures here just to show you a little bit about um, Reading itself. It's actually the largest town in the UK. So although I've mentioned how easy it is to reach places like London and, and also Oxford as well, you certainly won't be bored in, in Reading. There is lots going on. In fact, a lot of people come to Reading, particularly in the evening for social activities from other parts of the area. So you can see the Oracle Centre there in, in the top left hand corner. That's our big shopping mall. So we've got all the shops that you would expect to see there, designer labels, and we've also got um, a lovely canal area that you can see there in the bottom right hand corner. That's just outside the Oracle shopping mall. There's some beautiful cafes and restaurants uh, and also our cinema there as well. So that's actually quite a nice social space in the evening and at weekends. Um, the lion that you can see there in the, the top right hand corner, that's actually part of Forbury Park, which is one of the really nice green spaces that we have in Reading. So you can see on a nice day, it's a really nice place to go and just relax, catch up with people. And we have lots of events happening there as well. And then the slightly more traditional older building that you see in the bottom left hand corner is where the Reading Museum is located. So there's quite a lot of culture and, and history in Reading. We also have the Abbey Ruins in Reading as well. So it's certainly not a, a boring place to be living and studying. So we've actually educated, it's, it's well over 150,000 different international people at the, the university since our establishments from 180 different countries. So it's a very diverse university community and Reading itself is, is very diverse as well. Um, you'll see when you see some of the later on in the presentation that we actually have a beautiful green parkland campus and we're very proud of the fact that we've for nine consecutive years been the, the recipient of the green flag award which is for the top green space in the UK so that's not just universities that's looking at parks and other green space in the UK as well so it really is a beautiful campus and that is an overhead shot of our campus there so you can see a mixture of our academic buildings there, some of them quite traditional, going back to 
sort of historical part of campus, but lots of new modern facilities as well. And we're lucky to have a beautiful lake, White Knights Lake, right in the centre of campus. Reading is uh, its teaching is also a very strong research university. So in fact, 98% of our research in the last research excellence framework assessment was deemed to be of international standing and um, we do a, a lot of world leading research particularly at the moment on things like climate change with our meteorology departments but also in areas like food science and with our agriculture school as well um, so you'll often see academics from Reading commenting in the media um, particularly on things like climate change. We are also in the uh, 205th in the in the QS World University rankings in 200 um, QS World University rankings. Got my words right there. Uh, for 220 uh, for 2020. <laughs> Too many numbers. Um, so very well ranked internationally. And we'll talk a little bit about our subject rankings as well. And I think importantly for you as students thinking about what you may do once you've got your degree, 94% uh, of our graduates are either working full time or have gone on to further study within six months of graduating. So I think that's an important statistic. And just a few more stats. So as well as being 205th in the world, we're the top in the top 30 for UK universities in the QS world rankings and we are joint 38th in the UK that's in the Times and the Sunday Times rankings for 220. But I think equally as important as overall rankings I think it is important to look at the subject that you're interested in studying because that's even more important I think and you can see that a number of our subjects actually feature in the top 20 in the UK. This is from the complete university guide Agriculture is an area that Reading is very strong for and our development studies programmes, but also things like archaeology, architecture, education, food science, marketing and land and property management as well. And all of these rankings, informations and other statistics relating to courses can be found on the website. So a little bit about our campus, and that is the lake that I mentioned there with our law school just in the background. We actually have four campuses altogether. The majority of our students will be studying at our White Knights campus. So this is the Parkland campus that I mentioned. It's actually over 100 hectares of beautiful Parkland. So it's a really large campus. And as I mentioned, quite a nice mixture of very modern facilities and some more traditional buildings going back to when we were first established as a university. And the majority of our programmes will be taught at White Night. So for most students, this is where you'll spend your time. And it's also where most of our student accommodation is based as well. London Road, which you can see just to the right hand side there, is where we will teach our architecture and our education programmes. So if you are coming to Reading to study those subjects, you would be at London Road, which is still very close to the White Knights campus, but it's a little bit closer to the town centre. And we also hold our graduation ceremonies there. So the Great Hall that you can see in the picture there is where you'll have your graduation. So the London Road campus is probably only 10 minutes walk from the town centre. Uh, White Knights is about 25 minutes walk into the town centre, but we have an excellent bus service which runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, takes less than 10 minutes to get you into the city centre. So really good links for those of you who don't want to actually walk. And just briefly, the other two campuses that we have. So Greenlands, which is the beautiful building that you can see there on the River Thames, is part of our business school. It's actually outside of Reading. It's about 30 minutes from Reading um, in a place called Henley. Um, this really is where we teach our part-time executive education programmes. So if you come to do a full-time course with our business school, you would be at the White Knights campus. Greenlands tends to be more business executives coming perhaps for a, a one-week course or doing our part-time MBA programme. And we do have a campus in Malaysia, so we do offer some of our degree programmes at the Malaysia campus. So for some students, they opt to study completely at Malaysia. But it also gives an opportunity for students who come to Reading to potentially spend their study abroad at the Malaysia campus if it's one of the subjects that we teach there. 
And that's a picture that's actually inside our business school. So looking down on the sort of meeting networking area and the library facility. And just another picture there of the campus. It's actually of the Hopkins building, which is one of our science faculty buildings. So you can see they're quite a modern facility with a lot of um, very modern equipment in the lab space there. So importantly, what can you actually come and study at Reading? We have four main subject areas that we teach. Arts, humanities and social sciences is a whole range of different programmes. As you can see there, we've got everything from things like art and design, film and television studies, to areas like law, politics, international relations, humanities. We also teach a number of languages as well. So this is probably the faculty that offers the most opportunities if you're thinking about doing a joint degree at undergraduate level. Um, so for example, you could combine film studies with literature, politics and economics. So there are more choices there for joint programmes. Within the science faculty, I've mentioned um, briefly architecture, we also have construction management and project management, which tend to be quite popular programmes, I know, for Turkey. Um, we also have areas like environmental science, computer science, geography and archaeology, so quite a good range of programmes within the sciences. And similarly within life sciences. So Reading doesn't actually have a medical school, so we don't teach medicine, but we do have a number of programmes quite closely aligned to medicine. Uh, so we've got things like biomedical science, biological science, biochemistry, and we do quite a lot of medical research as well. And in fact, we've just introduced at undergraduate level a degree in medical science which can be a pathway into medical school so if you aren't able to get a place on a medicine program you can actually take this course and get into postgraduate level medicine. I've mentioned about our agriculture school, Reading really is incredibly well ranked for agriculture and we have a range of programmes particularly at master's level within agriculture and development studies so some really interesting programmes that you can look at there we actually have our own farm as part of the university so really good opportunities if you are interested in agriculture and we do have some Turkish students studying with us in our agriculture school currently Psychology has also become very popular in Turkey and again we have a number of Turkish students studying on our psychology programmes. We offer a range of psychology courses including a conversion course if you haven't actually studied psychology at undergraduate level but probably most popular I would say in Turkey is our MSc in clinical psychology where we actually have a guaranteed placement opportunity so it is a very competitive program it's actually full for 2020 but it is a really good option if you are thinking about getting some clinical experience with psychology um, we do have another program which has a research placement which is still open for applications for this year and within this department um, you'll also see things like chemistry food science and the biological science programs that i mentioned and then we have our business school. Um, it's the Henley Business School. Um, that's the name of the business school, but it's very much part of the university and you will graduate with a Reading University degree. Um, but it refers back to when we merged with the Henley Management School. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about their programmes on the next slide. So the business school is actually one of the oldest business schools in the UK. It was founded in 19. 45. We are a triple accredited business school and there are less than 1% of business schools in the UK who have that triple accreditation. So it is a very well ranked, very well respected business school. And we have over 150 different academics teaching in the business school. Many of them have published some very interesting works. You'll often see them in the, the, the media commenting on various things and a, a number of partnerships as well. And that is a, a picture there of the business school on the right hand side. And within the business school, we offer accounting, business and management. We have within our ICMA centre a number of finance programmes. So things like finance investment banking, investment management, capital market regulations. So some quite specialist programmes. We actually have our own trading rooms within the ICMA centre with live data from the London stock market. So some quite interesting programmes there. We also have our real estate courses, which I mentioned earlier when I talked about the land and property management being very well ranked in the UK. 
the real estate programs are very good programs. Um, and we also offer programs in things like marketing and entrepreneurship as well. And as you can see on the slide there, some very strong rankings in the business areas. Um, so eighth in the UK for our Masters in Management. Our MBA is fifth in the UK in the economists there and also um, as i mentioned land and property management you can see first in the uk just a couple of other programs that are offered at reading outside of the main degree courses we do have our own international foundation program so for students who are at high school in turkey and, and thinking degree we do accept you directly from high school with your diploma but for some students, they do need to take the foundation course. They may not perhaps have got a high enough grade in their high school for direct entry. So the good thing with our foundation program is that it is taught at the university. So you'll be living and studying on the campus and you'll be taught by academics in the area that you intend to go and study after your foundation course. And we've been running the program for over 30 years. So it's a very well established program. We have a very good pass rate. Um, the last three years, 96% of our students have passed the program with 80% progressing to their degree at Reading. And as well as our September start date, we do have some other flexible start dates, particularly our January intake. So it's something you might want to think about if you think you may need that extra year before you start your bachelor degree. And the good news for Turkey is that we do actually have some country scholarships this year. So for students joining the foundation programme from Turkey, you will automatically receive a £2,500 discount on your tuition fee. And you can apply for one of our IFP ambassador scholarships, which you can apply for in addition to the scholarship that I mentioned. So basically, you can apply to be an ambassador for the programme, help with things like uh, marketing, campus visits and get a further £2,500 discount on your fees. You do have to apply for that one. So that one isn't automatic. And Pre-sessional English, I will talk a little bit about our entry requirements in a moment, which will include our English requirements. We do run what we call pre-sessional English, which is basically academic English that you can study before you start your degree course. So this is usually if you've taken an IELTS or another English language test and you haven't quite got the mark that we've asked for to be able to join your degree course, we would suggest then that you came and did some pre-sessional English. We run these courses throughout the year, but for most students, they just need short blocks of English just to improve before they start their degree course. And for 2020, we are actually offering this course online because of the issues currently with being able to get to the UK easily. Um, it would normally be taught at Reading on the campus, but you can take it online this year. And we will have start dates throughout June and July, depending on whether you need the 11, the nine or the six week course. It is possible that the six week course may have the option of actually coming to Reading to finish the course with us, but it will still be offered online as well. And at the end of the pre-sessional course, you will take an examination. It's our own university exam. So you don't need to retake an IELTS. It will be a test that you will sit with the university. You will find all the information about the pre-sessional English course with things like the costs and the application deadlines on the website. And just to mention briefly, this is perhaps more if you're thinking about doing a bachelor degree at Reading. We do offer opportunities for study abroad placements. I mentioned about possibly being able to study at our Malaysia campus. But we do have a number of other partnerships, not just in Europe, but in the US, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, Hong Kong. So there are opportunities to go and spend perhaps just a semester or maybe a complete year studying abroad. And the other thing which we offer for most of our degrees is the option of doing a work placement. This would normally be a year that you would go and spend in industry. But there are some programmes where you actually have the option of maybe just doing a short placement or maybe just two or three hours a week as part of your course. And as I mentioned, with psychology and a 
few other programs, there are the options to do placements as part of master's courses. Um, it's not as readily offered as we have for bachelor degrees, but it is available with some programs. And again, the university will support you with those placements and those application processes. So just a little bit on our entry requirements and on our website, we do have a country page specifically for Turkey where you can go and check these and you can always contact us if you would like to check a requirement for a particular program. But as a guide for our foundation course, we would be looking for a minimum of 65% overall in your high school diploma. For direct entry to a bachelor degree, we would look for a minimum of 73% overall. Um, it ranges between 73 and 78 percent. So some of our programs, things like law and business would have slightly higher requirements. If you're looking to come and study for a master's degree at Reading, we would be looking for a minimum GPA of 2.75. We do have a list of top universities from Turkey where we accept slightly lower GPA. And for those universities, we would be able to consider you with 2.5. But for programmes where we're asking for a 2.1 in the UK degree, we would be looking for an equivalent GPA of 3 from Turkey, 2.8 from the top universities. If you're thinking about doing a PhD with us, then you would usually need to already have a master's degree from Turkey. Occasionally with PhDs, we can accept students directly from bachelor degree, but normally you would have a master's. And just briefly about our English requirements. So when you apply to university, you don't need to have taken an English test. We will be offering you a place based on your academic grades but we will need you to meet a certain level of English to be able to start your degree course. So with our English requirements, we would typically be looking for a minimum IELTS score of 6.5 overall. Um, the exception to this would be foundation, which has a much lower English requirement because you will do English as part of the foundation course. Some of our programmes, for example, in our business school, we will be asking for seven overall. Um, but the information is on the website. We do have an area particularly for English requirements and we do accept other English tests. So TOEFL and Pearson are a couple of the other programmes um, that we will accept for entry to degree courses. And again, any concerns or questions about English requirements, you can just drop us an email. Tuition fees, just to give you a guide of costs, the foundation course is just under £17,000 for the year. Undergraduate courses, um, the fees vary depending on whether it is a laboratory based course, but our, our minimum tuition fee again is just under £17,000, um, up to 20315 that would be for our science courses. Master's courses do tend to have different fees for different programmes, so they start at just over £16,000 up to around £25,000. That tends to be for some of the courses in the business school. And for living costs, we would recommend around £132 per week for your living costs plus your accommodation. And the important question, scholarships. So for master's programmes, we do have a number of scholarships available. Most courses are offering scholarships ranging from £1,000 to £5,000. They do close on the 1st of June. So if you are somebody who's thinking about applying to come to university this year, then you probably are going to be too late for the scholarships, unfortunately, because you do have to have your offer before you apply for the scholarship. But they will be available again next year. Um, Chevening and Commonwealth Shared Scholarships are some external scholarships which are offered. And for PhD students, our graduate school offer a number of international research studentships. They do have early closing dates, so you do need to really plan ahead with those. You need to be applying by January, February for those scholarships. So you probably need to be applying sooner than that for your degree course. 
The business school have their own scholarships program. They're offering over 100 scholarships. They have over a million pounds in, in funding for scholarships. So very generous scholarships available. So it's definitely worth applying for those scholarships. They are still open. They don't have a formal closing date. So if you are thinking about business, there is still time for the scholarships. Undergraduates, I'm afraid we don't have as many scholarships. Architecture and psychology are the only two departments offering scholarships this year, um, but those are both still available. So a little bit about campus now and after the course, I guess accommodation is the next most important thing to, to think about. Um, because we are a campus university, Reading is very lucky in that we have a lot of student accommodation. So we can actually guarantee you accommodation on campus in one of our hall rooms, as long as you apply by the 1st of August for your accommodation. And that guarantee is for postgraduate students as well as undergraduate students. We've got quite a range of different types of accommodation. Everyone has their own room, so there's no shared dormitories, but you can decide whether you're going to have your own private bathroom with our ensuite rooms, or if you're happy to share bathrooms. Um, similarly, you can opt for a fully catered accommodation where all your meals are provided, or you can go self-catered where you still have the option of using the catering facilities, but you also have a really nice kitchen space and you prepare your own meals as well. The contracts that we offer are typically a 40 or a 51 week contract. Um, generally, bachelor degree students would take our 40 week contract. Postgraduate students tend to stay the full year, so would normally take a 51 week contract. And you can see there that's one of the rooms, I should say, before a student has moved in and made it a little bit more untidy. Uh, but that's one of our premium ensuite rooms. But you can see there they're very bright, modern rooms. Um, we do operate what we call an early bird application for accommodation. So if students apply by May, they will actually be guaranteed their first choice of accommodation. So that's quite popular if people want to make sure that they get the first hall that they put on their preference list. Um, but as long as you apply by the 1st of August, you're, you're guaranteed accommodation. You do have to have accepted your place at Reading, paid any deposits that are required before you're allowed to apply for your accommodation. And the weekly accommodation charges start at 130 per week. Um, it goes up to just over 200 pounds per week. The ensuite rooms that I mentioned would be a little bit more expensive. So you'd be looking around 150, 160 per week for the ensuite rooms just shows you um, campus so you can see the purple buildings there are the accommodation buildings so you can see how close they are to the academic buildings so they're all on campus or within a 10 minute walk this is mckinder hall which is one of the, the nice ensuite halls that i mentioned you can see very modern accommodation and then wantage which is more of a traditional hall it's one of our older halls And just very briefly, a little bit about the other facilities on campus, because we are a campus university, everything you need as a student is on campus. That includes the library. We have over 15 cafes and restaurants on campus catering for all sorts of different dietary requirements. We have two supermarkets, including an Asian supermarket. We have a bank and a post office on campus. We have our very active students union, which is run separately to the university, but is on campus. And within that facility, we have our own nightclub, um, 360. We also have a bar area and also our own Starbucks cafe. And we have over 150 different clubs and societies that you can get involved with. So again, they're all organized around the students union and run by the students. And they're a mix of sports clubs and also different societies that you can join. Um, sports facilities which I'll talk about in a moment as well as a medical centre close to campus and a nursery for people who might be bringing families with them. So this is a picture of the, the library here and you can see some of the study space inside the library. This has recently had a £40 million 
investment. So it's had a lot of work done to make it more energy efficient, but also to really improve the facilities for the students. It's open 24 hours uh, a day during term time. We've got over a million books in the library, but also access to a lot of electronic and online publications as well. Um, and a lot of support with things like IT and study advice as well within the library. And sports, so as I mentioned, our sports societies, we, we've got a nice gym area on campus, uh, very nice air conditioned over two floors. We also have um, lots of indoor badminton squash courts. We have indoor tennis courts, uh, indoor football pitches, and then outside lots of space as well. So pretty much every sport you can think about available either competitively, if you're particularly good at a sport and want to represent the university in the formal leagues, or just for fun and, and staying fit. So lots to do sports wise. And that's the indoor tennis courts that we have. And student support, I think similar to other UK universities, I, th I think student support is something that the UK has a lot of and does very well. And, and Reading is no different with that. Um, you will have an academic tutor who will be a member of academic staff in your department that you will meet during welcome week and they will be somebody that you'll meet at regular intervals during your course who will support you with any academic issues. We have a lot of support with things like study advice, academic English, um, we have a visa and immigration team so if you have any issues with your student visa or bringing independence to the UK they're fully trained in all the legal advice and can help with that. We do run a welcome week before the courses start. So in September, we have a one week orientation program, which is everything from people meeting you at Heathrow Airport when you arrive to support when you get to campus with things like opening bank accounts, registering with doctors, all those practical things that you need to do. We have a very good careers team at Reading. So there's a lot of support with career opportunities and that's everything from finding a part time job if you would like to work while you're studying to thinking about full-time opportunities when you graduate. They organise lots of job fairs, um, lots of support with things like graduate applications, mock interviews, psychometric testing. Um, and it's a service that you can use once you've graduated as a student as well. Um, and we do have a counselling and wellbeing service. So if people are having any issues or any concerns, there's lots of support with that. And just couple of things to finish on. Um, obviously, it is, is difficult to come and physically visit the university, but there are lots of ways that you can find out more about the university. One of them are the various webinars which we run throughout the year. Um, we're running them on a whole host of different topics from making your application, how to write a successful personal statement to things like arriving in the UK, what the accommodation is going to be like, the career service, how you get a work placement. So you'll get um, sent notification of those if you've registered an interest in Reading. Um, you'll be kept up to date with those as they happen, but you can also find them on our website. And if there are events that have happened in the past, you can sign up for those and still watch them. And some departments have actually put their own subject specific ones on there as well. So I know psychology and the business school have definitely got some webinars on there and we'll be running more of those over the summer. We also have some of our current students who are ambassadors. Some of those are international students. You can find them on the main university homepage and they're very happy to chat to you with any questions that you may have about living in Reading, what the university is like. You'll see them from a number of different degree subject areas as well. So you could hopefully find somebody from the subject area that you're interested in. Um, so do have a look at those if you're interested in having a chat with any of our students. We will be running some virtual open days in June. We will be having a master's virtual open day on the 12th of June, and then that will be followed on the 19th and 20th of June by our open days for our undergraduate students. So that's a great opportunity to find out more about not just the university, but you will actually be able to go to subject specific sessions, talk to academic staff and current students. So it's quite a simple registration form for those and they'll be delivered online. So it's a great chance for you to get involved in those and we do have an international office Facebook and Instagram account so we keep that up to date with lots of information so do sign up for those 
And we do have some virtual tours available as well. So you can go online and, and experience campus on one of our virtual tours. And there is one there for the business school as well. And finally, my contact details there. So I'm always very happy to be in touch with any questions at all that you may have about studying at Reading. And I think we have actually got some time now at the end of the presentation for any questions that you may have sent in. So thank you very much for your time in the presentation and we'll see if there are any questions. Claire, thank you so much. Uh, I see a question on the questions tab. So uh, let me disable your screen share and then you can close your... Okay, now I disabled. So you can close your presentation and go to the platform. And on the questions tab, you will see a, a question. Okay. Okay, yes, that's good. Okay. Okay, so this is a really good question, actually, very timely, uh, asking whether it's possible to start online and then continue on campus at a later date. Um, this is a really good question. Obviously, we've got a lot of concern at the moment by people who are due to come and start with this in September about whether it's going to be possible with the, the current situation with the travel restrictions to actually start in September. We've just made a decision this week, which has uh, been communicated to anybody holding an offer, that we will be opening campus as normal in September. So we'll be running our welcome programme on the 21st of September for one week, and then teaching will start on the 28th of September. But we do realise that for a lot of students, it may not be possible to actually be in Reading to start the course in September. So we will be delivering lectures and seminars and all other aspects of teaching online as well. So that if you're not actually able to get to campus in September, you will still be able to start your course and then get to Reading as soon as it's safe to do so. And we've actually got some really good experience with this because we've actually been teaching since March in this way. Um, so our academic staff are very well set up for doing this. And the feedback from, from talking to current students has been that it's actually worked very well. So we very much hope that people will be able to come to campus in September. But we do have a plan if it's not possible so that you're not having to miss starting your course. And obviously, if you do come to campus in September, because social distancing rules are likely to still be in place at that time, larger lectures will be delivered online, even for those students who are physically in Reading. So hopefully that helps with that, that question. Let's see if we've got any more questions. Please do feel free, there's still time if you want to, to type a question in the chat function there. Okay, so language requirements. So we covered a little bit about the language requirements in the presentation earlier. So you can apply for your, your place at the university without having taken an English test. But if you're thinking about coming in September, by the 31st of August, you will need to provide us with an English test, something like IELTS, TOEFL. Um, we also accept things like Cambridge and Pearson. Now, we do realise at the moment it's quite difficult in most countries to take an IELTS test because the offices are closed currently. We're keeping that um, under a sort of quite close watch to see whether that changes. Um, in some countries, we know that might be opening up soon. But we are looking at what options may need to take place if we can't have IELTS being offered. So perhaps our own English language test, which I mentioned that pre-sessional students take at the end of the course, whether we can offer that online to our offer holders. So at the moment, we are still asking people to go ahead and take their English tests as soon as they can. But we will keep that under review and we are keeping that updated. Um, and also looking at things like whether it might be possible to accept other tests. Um, IELTS indicator, which you can take from home, is one that we have our submissions, whether that can be considered. It's not currently accepted at Reading, but maybe for the future. Uh, Duolingo, which um, I know is another test which some students are considering taking. This is a test which we do accept for joining our pre-sessional English course, but we're not currently accepting it 
for admission to degree programs. Um, we don't feel it's a strong enough English language test for you to be able to join your degree course. So if you're thinking about doing pre-sessional English, then it would be fine, but not for a degree course. Uh, good question about sports here. Um, I mentioned about our sports park. Uh, so a question about whether we have a swimming pool on campus. Having told you about all the different sports and societies we have on campus, I have to say the bad news is that we don't have a swimming pool, unfortunately, at Reading, um, which I know is a bit of a disappointment to some students. We do have a really good Olympic size swimming pool in Reading itself, which I know a lot of the students use. And there's also a private school that's very close to campus that I know open up to let students use their pool. So there are options in Reading itself, but not on campus, I'm afraid. It's probably about the only sport that we can't cater for on campus. Okay, so we've probably got um, two or three more minutes if anybody did have anything else that you wanted to ask at all. What I shall probably do is just pop my email address in the chat box just so that I know sometimes after the presentation people go away and do have questions. So I'm going to pop that in there. So you can just drop me an email at any time with any questions, particularly if there's a course that you're particularly interested in and you'd like a little bit more information or you're not too sure about the entry requirements, then just drop me an email. If I'm not sure, then I can check with the department. Um, and usually two or three times a year, I do have the opportunity to come out to Turkey in, in normal circumstances and hopefully we'll be able to do that again soon. So there's always a chance to, to hopefully meet when I'm in country as well. Anyone got anything else at all they want to ask? I realise with the time difference, it's getting a little bit late in Turkey now. You're probably wanting to go off and relax for the evening. Oh, here it's a little bit late. Maybe that's why. I'm just thinking that. Yes, I think if it was me, I'd be getting ready to do other things or go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you got uh, quite a few uh, questions, actually. Yeah, no, they're good questions as well. And thank you all very much for taking the time and at this time of night to come and join the sessions. Hopefully been helpful to you, but it's been really good for you to, to tune in and watch. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Claire. It was great. No problem. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Take care. See you soon. Hopefully. I hope. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.